It's been a while, but I still get people reaching out on social media asking me for an update on the Volta breakdown in my 2021 Storyteller Overland Classic van. If you didn't know, Volta is a company that supplies automotive grade lithium battery systems to the RV industry. So today I'm going to do a final update. I'll briefly talk about the timeline of the repair. I'll share with you what I've learned from this experience. And at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what you can do to protect your Volta system in the future. Hi, my name is Peng. I am a photographer, a small business owner, and I am a travel addict. Before we start the video, I just want to reiterate that this is all my personal experience and opinions, and nobody paid me or influenced me in what I have to say. So first, let's get it out of the way. My Volta has been fixed, and it has been performing flawlessly for the last five months. Now, let me give you a quick summary of the timeline of my Volta repair. If you want a more detailed breakdown, no pun intended, of what happened and what I did for troubleshooting, you can watch my first Volta video here. My Volta stopped working on Sunday, September 26th. I opened a ticket that night and the troubleshooting for my issue started on Monday, September 27th. By September 29th, I already got my van into La Mesa RV to replace an alternator. It helps. It helps your tech. Well, at least I figure it helps your tech. Um, when I took this off, I basically bagged all the screws and labeled where they came from. But unfortunately, as you may have seen my first Volta video, my inverter was also broken and parts were back ordered due to supply chain shortages. By this time, it was also clear that there was something wrong with Volta, as a lot of recently delivered vans were also getting the same flashing red light. That's why on that same day, Volta sent out their first mass email and acknowledged the problem and began looking into it. By the end of week two, they finally figured out the source of the issue and by week three, they began shipping out replacement harnesses. I received my harness on Friday of week three, but of course, I had to wait another week before my inverter came in. So in the end, um, it took me four and a half weeks to get everything replaced and get Volta back online. The actual alternator inverter replacement at La Mesa was very fast. Each took about four to five hours. I just waited there. I didn't have to leave the van overnight. So as a new RV owner, what have I learned from this regarding obtaining service for the storyteller? Always open a ticket with Storyteller first. Once you open a ticket, they will email you to set up a consultation time. Make sure you check your junk email folder. I've done this three times already, and each time I receive the email within 24 hours. Keep in mind, they're not open on weekends, so if you start a ticket on Friday night, you're not going to hear back from anyone until Monday. If this is an emergency and you need answers before you hear back from Storyteller, check out the Stone Nation knowledge base. There's a list of common issues and how to resolve them. I'll put a link down below. If you don't see your issue there, then go to the Storyteller Facebook group. Search for your issue or ask a question. You'll get tons of people chiming in to help. If you have to bring your van into a service center, do a little research on the dealership you're going to. Check out their Yelp and Google review. Remember, even if the dealership has a mixed bag review, it's the individual that you're dealing with that makes a difference. So if you see a service advisor's name being mentioned in a lot of positive reviews, request that person when you go in. That's how I found my service advisor, Tara at La Mesa Davis, and she was awesome. Be courteous to your service advisor. Understand, just like others in the service industry, they're overworked and have a tough job right now. For example, Tara was telling me how they have RVs sitting on the lot for a long time waiting for parts, but if the RV manufacturer doesn't offer the support or doesn't approve warranty work, nothing gets done. The customer doesn't know that, and the service advisor ends up stuck in the receiving end of all of their frustration. So be kind to your service advisor and build a good relationship with them, and they will be more willing to work with you. That reminded me, Tara also mentioned 
how easy it was to work with Storyteller and Volta. She said Ryan from Storyteller called her and basically told her to do whatever is necessary to get my van repaired quickly. I never spoke to a Ryan. I don't even know who he is, but thank you, Ryan. This does make me wonder what else Storyteller is doing behind the scene that we as customers don't even know or see. And that brings me to my whole experience with the repair. After all of this, I really appreciate the customer service both Storyteller and Volta provided. I'll start with Storyteller first. I've seen some people say that for $160,000 to $200,000 purchase, having this many issues is unacceptable. Uh, fair point. I've personally only experienced three issues so far, and Volta was the only major one. By the way, if you want to know what those two other issues were, I'll talk about them in my upcoming six-month van ownership review. So subscribe if you don't want to miss it. The truth is, every van or RV will have problems, some more than others. What makes the brand you choose different is the support you get when something does go wrong. And so far to me, at least, Storyteller has done an excellent job. I also recognize that sometimes some issues are beyond Storyteller's control. A lot of the components in the van, such as the fridge, the fan, Volta, they're from third-party suppliers. Storyteller didn't build them, but when the components break, the first thing that comes to people's mind is the Storyteller van broke. They're kind of taking some of the blame. I think Storyteller is aware of this. That's probably why occasionally you see them switching suppliers. It's also pretty evident they pick their suppliers carefully. They pick companies that are just as committed to customer care as they are. Rickson, for example, the supplier for the house heater. I've never dealt with them personally, but I know people who have had good service experience with them. And of course, Volta is another excellent supplier. So let's talk about Volta. I'll be honest, a huge part of why I got this van was for the Volta battery system. From what I've heard, the Volta system itself cost something like $23,000, $24,000. So when it first broke, of course I was not happy about it. But the way they handled the repair very much impressed me. They shipped parts overnight to my dealer so they could speed up my repair. Throughout the two weeks when they were trying to figure out what was wrong, they provided regular email updates to keep owners in the loop. In the end, the problem was a faulty harness. And the reason the harness was faulty? Well, according to Jack Johnson, the CEO of Volta, it was due to supply chain issues. When they had to switch to a different supplier due to shortages, they had to do some quick re-engineering. And during that process, a mistake was made, and that's how a whole bunch of faulty harnesses went out. If you're wondering how I know this, I got all of this insider information from the Stone Nation podcast hosted by Yang Wa. It's an excellent podcast with in-depth interviews with storyteller owners and suppliers. Whether you're an existing owner or just, or just a gawker, it's an exceptional source for all things storyteller. And for the record, she didn't pay me a dime to say any of this. I'm actually a volunteer on Stone Nation and I helped build the website. So there might be some bias there, but I genuinely love her show. Also, I just love what she does for the community, so I want to help her spread the word. Check out her podcast if you haven't already. Back to Volta. What I found refreshing in the Volta interview was that Jack Johnson was very honest about what happened. Whereas a different company might put out some PR statement that doesn't admit any fault, he basically admitted they had a new hire who made a mistake. I really appreciate that they owned up to it and took the steps to fix things and make it right. In the end, I'm a very happy camper. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually love these companies more after my van broke than before it broke. I don't think you can say that with a lot of companies. I can also see why there is a kind of cult following with some storyteller owners. Now that I've been using Volta with zero issues for about five months since the repair, I love it even more. The battery and the inverter are so powerful, it's like I'm in a house. Conserving electricity is never even on my mind. And any frustration I had with the breakdown? Well, this was the first trip I took after I got the van back.
my god, there's a human on there. All it took was one weekend trip like this for me to forget all the trouble and love the van again. Oh, and that tip on protecting your Volta system. Keep your inverter on. According to Volta, the inverter is designed with a suppression circuitry that protects the system, and it only works when it's on. They have confirmed that the inverter can stay on at all times, even when you go off-roading. The only time you should turn it off is when you are parked for a long time without means to charge and you want to maximize your battery. Otherwise, just get in the habit of turning the inverter on whenever you turn on Volta. So I hope this was a satisfying update to my Volta saga. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. That keeps me motivated to make more videos for you guys. If you have any other questions, comment below and I'll try to answer them. I know this channel is almost turning into a storyteller channel, but I also have lots of other video ideas lined up, like hiking, traveling, photography tips, uh, product reviews. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.